What's up everybody, Mike Ferrasi. We're gonna go over some more mortgage industry terminology and try to make it a little bit easier to understand. Today, we're gonna to review the term margin call. Margin call has been tossed out a lot lately and it's a big scary term being talked about by a lot of really big scary banks, but not a whole lot of people out there who are consuming this stuff really knows what a margin call is. So today, we're gonna to try to oversimplify it a little bit just for you, so we can all know a bit more about what we're talking about. Okay, all of this starts with the rate lock. When you lock a loan with the bank that you're doing a loan with. If it's an originator, you're the one originating the loan, employed by the bank, or if you're a borrower, it's the bank that you're going through to get the loan on your home. You lock that in. Why do you lock in your rate? Well, the simple explanation is because the market can do that. And if the market does that, your rate gets worse and you don't want that to happen. Conversely, the market can do that and your rate would get better. Lately, the market's been doing that. So everybody's locking their loans right away, which is a good thing. But when you lock that loan with the bank, what do you think the bank does? See, the bank, secures your market. They give you a rate lock to make sure that it's gonna be secure and stable however long you need to close that loan, 25, 40 days, whatever it is, your rate is gonna be safe. The bank puts their stamp of approval on it and you're good to go. But the bank, they don't have a loan that they can sell to an investor or an aggregator at a specified price or rate until your loan is funded. So that bank, they're still on the hook for all the market movement that happens between the time you lock your rate and the time you close your loan. They protect themselves with a hedge. A hedge is going to be an investment, an equal investment in a market that moves as close to the 100% opposite direction of the mortgage market. Let's make this a little easier to understand. You can invest all your money into droids or lightsabers, but for some reason, based on their uses, historically, if people are putting their money into droids, people are taking their money out of lightsabers. But in markets where lightsabers are strong, droids just keep getting weaker by about the same amount. See, that's a good opportunity to hedge your investment. When droids go up, lightsabers go down, vice versa. All you Libras know what I'm talking about. It's all about trying to find a good balance in the scales. Now a mortgage company does mortgage loans and when they lock your loan, that's an investment to them. They're investing that your loan is going to close at that locked interest rate. And once it does, then they have a secure asset that they can then sell off so they can cash in on their investment. That makes these mortgages look really good, but not in fluctuating rate markets, especially if the value of these mortgages is going down. So to protect themselves, that mortgage company is going to make an equal investment in droids over here. Because if the values of these go down, then the values of these will go up and negate that loss. So when these close, they can also close out these investments. They take some losses here, they make some extra here, everybody's happy. And vice versa, if these go up and the value of these go down, they close out their hedge and they have to pay out the losses, but they made more on these than they thought they were going to. Everything's even, everybody's happy. Okay, so you lock your loan, the bank takes out an equal and hopefully opposite investment on your locked loan, as well as every loan that they're issuing lock commitments on. Remember, it's gonna be the entire locked pipeline they do this with, so they can make sure that they're 100% protected against that market movement. So the hedge, kind of a mortgage bank's version of a lock, a little bit different, but it's a way to protect themselves. But who do they take that hedge out with? Much like you and me, when we want to invest, say in the stock market, a lot of us go through a stock broker, mortgage bank, not a whole lot different. They go through what's called a broker dealer. And the broker dealers are the ones who take out those hedge investments for the mortgage bank. So everybody's happy, right? Yeah. 
Usually, except for in markets like this, when you see a lot of rapid improvement in the mortgage market, rates going down, 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 buying power getting stronger, more people eligible for refinances, it's great to hear as an industry. For a mortgage originator, for a borrower who's looking for a refi, it's all fantastic news. But don't forget, that mortgage bank owns a whole lot of these based on yesterday's market. And this is an equal investment we're talking. So if you have a mortgage bank with thousands of loans in their locked pipeline, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of locked loans, their hedge also worth hundreds of millions of dollars in that opposite investment. When mortgages are doing well, this investment, not so much. And this investment, is taken out by those broker dealers we talked about. Well, the broker dealers protect themselves too. And the way that they protect themselves is with a pre-negotiated margin call that's done in all those wonderful broker dealer contracts. It's pre-agreed upon, the mortgage banks know to expect it. But that margin call, the term we're trying to drill down to today, is very much a call for margin. doesn't really get a whole lot simpler. Broker dealer placing a call to the mortgage bank and saying, hey, I know you invested all this money with us on these investments at this level, but now it's worth this and we want that money. Boom, roasted. They're calling to collect that margin, not when that investment closes out. No, they want it up front. They want it now, or at least a percentage of it, whatever's negotiated. Normally, if you lose on that hedge investment, it's okay because you're gaining on the mortgage loan side. So you're selling all those loans for more than you would have made so you can afford to pay off that hedge. It's not a problem at all. But in a market like today, when mortgages have so aggressively improved, those hedge investments have also aggressively declined past the threshold for margin calls. And when those margin calls happen, that bank doesn't have the luxury of funding a bunch of loans at a big profit so they can pay it back. No, they have to pay that now before those loans fund. Now, a lot of you are thinking, well, those loans are gonna fund, so they're gonna make that money to kind of basically reimburse themselves at that point since they're already shelling it out now. And yeah, you're right, but when you're dealing with investments that are hundreds of millions, sometimes billions of dollars big, those margin calls, they're not for a few thousand dollars here and there, they can be for a few million. Right. And there's a lot of companies out there who aren't liquid enough and they're not as well capitalized to be able to cover those margin calls and sustain doing business until they can fund those loans for that little extra money to reimburse their own pockets. Personally, I'm lucky enough to be with a company that is. Great leadership, well capitalized, everything's fantastic. I don't want this to turn into a commercial. There's a lot of fantastic companies out there like that. There's a lot of mortgage banks that are gonna be doing just fine and they're gonna be funding record numbers. Spoiler alert, check your LinkedIn feeds next month. You're gonna see a lot of record funding months posted again, like we did last summer. But there's a lot of companies that aren't going to be able to make it through all these margin calls and continue doing business. So when you hear the word margin call, that's where it's coming from. That's why it's such a big deal. That's why it's so scary. And that's why it has a lot of people shaking in their boots. But the next time you hear the term, at least you know what you're talking about. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll talk to you next time.